Hey everybody, Plasma1945 with a training mission for you to answer the question, how do you escape those pesky AIM-120s, AMRAMs, R77s, or SD-10s? Download the mission, save it to open beta missions in DCS, and you can launch it with me. So, you have a big selection of friendly aircraft to fly from the blue side, but there's both Russian, NATO, and uh, Gen 3, Gen 4 planes there. Your enemies are six bandits, which are either F-15s or F-16s. There's three levels of difficulty, medium, easy, and hard. And the difference is how far they're gonna launch their one AIM-120 at you. That's all they got. They got no guns. They've they all got veteran skills, but the point with these guys is to have them launch a missile at you before you shoot at them. Get them to fire and your job is to evade them. After you've evaded the one missile they've launched, turn back, splash them, and spawn in the next guy. All right, jumping in, you've got a big selection of aircraft. You've got a tutorial on the screen explaining what you need to do by pressing the comms menu. It's gonna pop up on your top right-hand corner. So once you're in the plane, after about four seconds in mission, you'll get a pop-up by hitting comms, other, and here you can select who you want to spawn in to fight against you. You get to fight each of these enemies once, and if you get splashed or you want them to come back again, left shift R will restart the mission. Now there's also labels. You can turn those on and off by pressing left shift F10. And this is to give you the ability to spot visually the position of the missiles and the enemies as they're coming at you. That's right, because you have the labels, and this is a training thing, you can see where that missile is in relation to you. If it's coming at you, if it's not turning left or right, you can just check it out. Similarly, you've got an AWACS, but if you want to upgrade your skill to the next level, you can go into that same comms menu by pressing backslash, click on other, and from here you can choose to deactivate the AWACS. That's right, without the AWACS, you will have no enemies on data link unless you've got them on with your radar or you're looking at your RWR. So they'll just disappear or they won't even show up on your data link. So here is the first launch. This is an easy max range shot from an enemy F-16. All right, so on the RWR, the F-16 is painting me, but the missile hasn't gone active yet. Usually a missile will go active at about 10 miles, which is about 20 kilometers. There it goes active. As soon as I get the beep, sharp turn to the right, level my wings out, to make sure I'm getting the RWR signal from it because if my belly's pointing to the missile or the top of my plane, I won't be able to detect its position. There you go, leveling back out again. And now that missile's parallel with me and I'm just about to break lock and I am safe. So watch this from another perspective. Missile's on its way towards me and a good indicator if you got data link, if an enemy plane starts to turn away, it's likely that they've already shot a missile. But with a NATO plane, you may not get a notification until the missile goes active, which will set up your RWR. There goes the RWR, and I start turning hard. The beeping, if it stops, that means you may be pointing your belly at the missile, so you want to level your wings back out until you hear the beeping again. Drop chaff, drop flares, and go full afterburner. So let's combine this all together with the RWR. Here we go. Missile's on me. Sharp turn, this time to the left. Level out, drop chaff. Still not complete level, and there's the missile, but by this point, it's been notched, which means I've broken its radar lock on me, and it's just gonna fly underneath me, completely useless. Now, if you watch this video through to the 10 minute mark, you'll be able to see the full diagram of this. So if you're really patient, you can check it out there. Otherwise, the basic thing is, turn 90 degrees away from wherever the missile's coming, level out, drop some chaff, keep your wings level that is, drop some chaff, and don't slow down. Put the missile on your nine o'clock or three o'clock position. Here's a longer range shot from an F-15. The F-15s here are high and fast. The F-16s are kind of low and slow. So here comes an AIM-120. This is one fired from max range. And by the way, if you survive a no escape missile, let me know in the comments, because those are really difficult. So here comes the missile. I know it's coming and I'm just starting to make a gentle turn to the right and dropping chaff. 
as the missile passes through a 90 degree position to my aircraft, it loses lock and just kind of flying parallel to me. If you look at it, you can see it's wobbling. It's wobbling because it's seeker is trying to find me, but it's not going to get me. All right, hopefully this mission works for you. Please leave comments below, ask questions. Everybody's been asking about how do you notch? How do you escape missiles? This is what it's all about. Uh, stick around for another 10 minutes after this to hear my diagramming and art. Please comment, share, like, and subscribe. Thousands of people watch videos, but nobody subscribes. So please do that. Plasma 1945 out, except for the tutorial part coming up right here. All right, guys, super quick diagram time here with Plasma. So your enemy is red. You are going to be blue because that is how the mission is set up. You're basically flying at each other. There's three types of enemies. There's enemies that will fire in what's known as the R max range. The R max range is an assumed range based on a calculation and all kinds of thinking that as long as you keep flying in the direction that you're flying and across this point, if the enemy fires a missile and you do absolutely nothing, don't change your speed, don't turn or anything else, the missile will kill you. This is what's known as the R max range. This is the easiest missile to defeat. That's why they're labeled as easy. There's also the no escape enemies. The no escape range is much closer to the launching aircraft. If you don't fly directly at that aircraft, you may ne never even enter that bubble because you might pass around it. But the no escape range is the hardest type of an aircraft missile to defeat because once you enter that no escape point, the missile, when fired, will have so much energy that no matter what crazy turns you might do, let's do some real Top Gun stuff, that missile will catch you and kill you. That's why it's called No Escape. So that's the second type of aircraft that you'll be facing. The third type of aircraft is kind of in the middle. It'll fire a mid-range shot on you, okay? So the mid-range shot, you've got a pretty good chance of defeating because the missile's been burning for a little bit, so it's starting to slow down and you've got plenty of time to get out of the way as long as you're not flying straight into the missile. So those are your three types of enemies. Now, what happens if you maneuver? So as soon as you enter the R max range, you should do two things. One, you may or may not get notification that a missile has been launched on you because a NATO plane will launch in what's known as track while scan where you will not get a notification that a missile is on its way until it's under 10 miles, which is 20 kilometers. A mid-range missile has been already flying for a bit, same with the RMAX, and they won't be too fast when they get to you. In a no escape scenario, that bozo might launch a missile on you at four miles or five miles, so you really gotta move. But let's say you're flying along, you're getting a ping, and this is the Russian RWR here, so I'm just gonna start drawing right on it. So you're flying, you're getting a notification from the front. All of a sudden, you start getting the beep and you're getting the red notification here. The front beacons are most likely going to be also lit up. So this says that there's a missile being launched towards you from the front. If you're flying a NATO plane, you might have an F-16 up here. And then all of a sudden, you're gonna have a little symbol of M on your nose what's your goal your goal is to maneuver your plane to shift this m to your 90 degree position and also to make sure that the light bulbs on your rwr go off and the only one that's shining is the one on your 90 degree position whether it's left or right it doesn't matter the Russian RWR has another cool thing. The closer the missile gets, the more of these will light up and they'll light up in this direction. So some of these will be off, but the more the missile gains on you, the more of these will light up. If they're lighting up quickly, that means the missile is catching up to you. If they're lighting up slowly, the missile is catching up, but not as fast. If they stop lighting up, that means you're pulling away or you're equidistant from the missile. And if they started going backwards, that means you've outrun the missile. So how do you do that? So you saw that turn that we did to the left. So let's do that turn to the left. 
Missiles coming at you. You turn left. The turn shouldn't be too sharp, otherwise you're going to make your airplane into an air brake. Because you're going to come at all that air, and it's going to hit you, and it's going to slow you down. So you want to turn, but not super aggressively. As soon as you make this turn, the missile is going to try to turn after you. Depending how far away the missile is, it may have to turn here, or maybe it'll start turning on this kind of an arc. But all of a sudden, you've made it more difficult for the missile to live. Because the missile, this is a bad picture of a missile, has a warhead. There's your warhead with the explosive. And most of it is a motor. And a motor is basically solid fuel that just burns. Imagine a firecracker, right? So it's got a motor and it's got a bunch of stabilizing fins. That motor will only burn for about 10 seconds maximum. Maybe even less. After the motor stops burning, the missile is just cruising. It can't get any faster. You, on the other hand, have one or two engines. So as soon as you make this turn, you go full burner. Maximum speed. Don't slow down. Burn as hard as you can. Because while this missile is turning and chasing you and slowing down, you're accelerating. That's what can cause the RWO on the Russian plane to slow down or completely stop because the missile isn't able to keep up with you as you speed away. The second thing you should do, and this is if you're looking at the back of your plane, when you turn, turn, roll, and slightly dive. Why do you want to dive? You want to dive to get into air that is a bit more dense. Denser air means that the missile will have more air to struggle with as it tries to follow you downwards. You can get all the way down to the ground. I don't recommend it. Realistically, you should kind of play a game and as you turn, try to get to a point where you're not going too slow, not going too fast. You're actually going as fast as you can, as a matter of fact. But try not to hit the ground because very often you can hit a tree down here. Not a cool thing. The other important thing, when you're turning your airplane sideways to get away from that missile, there's your wings, I'm sorry for the crap yard, there's your tail. Most people will be diving this way, right? So you're gonna turn sideways. Here's the problem. Your airplane, if you look at it from the back, on the top and on the bottom has blind spots. So if you're flying sideways, your RWO receivers are not pointing in the right direction so these blind spots are not going to tell you there's a missile coming so what you want to do is you want to turn dive and then try to level out and you're going to see this in the video right so when i level out all of a sudden everything starts beeping again so you get the beep 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 missiles coming you turn and then everything goes quiet the reason it's quiet is not because the missile's gone it's because you've put your plane in a position where its top and bottom are looking at the missile and your receivers aren't telling you that there's a missile. As soon as you level out, you're gonna get the beep again. And you can start watching what's happening to the missile. This is applicable for NATO planes and for the Russian aircraft. Just because things have stopped beeping doesn't mean you've evaded that missile. It's still coming, except you're not looking at it with your sensors. Now, the final thing, why you're going on a 90 degree. By putting the missile on a 90 degree position from your plane, you're trying to notch it. And what do I mean by that? Think of it this way, really simple. If the missile is looking at you from your 90 degree angle, so you're not flying at the missile, you're flying sideways from the missile, its radar will go blind and there's a chance it will lose you. Even if you're not flying a perfect 90 degree, but you should try to get into that 90 degree. Go back and forth and just until you get into that 90 degree. If you're at 85 and then maybe you go to 95, every time you pass through the 90 degree mark, there's a chance the missile will lose you. If it loses you, awesome. You may just survive and it might just fly under you completely useless. If the missile loses you and then finds you again, so let's say you're going through 85, the missile's pointing at you, you pass through 90, the missile loses you and kind of starts to wobble, it's trying to find you again. And then you go to 95 and the missile finds you again. 
this time that it's wobbling, it's also slowing down because it's doing this. It's looking for you. So by putting the missile on the 90, not only do you have a chance to blind it, but you also have a chance to make it wobble, which will be a positive thing for you. Whew, all right.